Hey guys, it's Tarek with Cyclone FPV, and uh, I've had a little bit of a glitch here trying to get to this uh, new equipment on YouTube uh, to work with our streaming. But um, I know what we were going to do is it's supposed to be planned for about an hour ago or 40, 50 minutes ago. I apologize for being late on it. Um, but what we're going to do today is we're going to do a quick video on setting up the uh, HDLRC. Uh, this is going to be this setup right here, which is going to be XJB uh, F, sorry, XJB F440. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, it's going to be the uh, 40 amp ESC, the flight controller, and the VTX. Uh, I'm going to do some wiring on it just to help some of you guys out, uh, but bear with me a second. I hear that I left the audio on in the background, so let me go turn that off real quick. I'll be right back. All right. Okay, so let me get back to this here. So what I've done is, um, and I'll show you this real quickly, is I've got the I've got a frame here, and this is just going to be a standard um, uh, Diablo frame. But um, the frame is going to have, uh, it's got the 20 millimeter spacer, so I'm going to actually put the board on here to show you guys uh, more about it and uh, to, to, to build it up properly and uh, get to it real quickly. I'm just trying to find on here, um, I'm trying to find on here the video itself so that I can, uh, I can at least keep track when you guys are watching and, and respond to comments, but I'm not really sure that it's going to let me do that. So I'm not sure how that's going to work. This whole thing has, has been a little bit of a difference, but all right, I won't delay any on this one. I'll just get started on it. Um, so what we want to do right now is uh, get to this screen and I'm going to do a little, I'll do a picture in picture here real quickly. Uh, see if that'll help a little bit. I'm using some new equipment today, so we might have a little bit of an issue, but I'm going to go ahead and get this started and open it up <clears throat> and lay everything out for you guys and show you exactly how I do this when I set these boards up. Um, and Let's see. All right, so we're going to get all the equipment out of here and lay everything out for you guys and have you guys see exactly what we're working with. Now, the camera angle will change. Uh, the one that's on the top right here is going to change to the one that's right here that you're looking at right now at this angle because I'm going to be using these, uh, the soldering with the, um, with the uh, magnifying glass. And I've got to clean my table here, too. I had a couple builds going on this morning, so let me just get that cleaned up real quick. One of the biggest things that I see uh, with the HGLRC uh, issues is um, that the soldering, again, and I know we've touched on this before, but the soldering just, people just keep packing on the solder. And then what ends up happening is they short something out. So I'm going to kind of show you how I would do it or how I do it. Um, the other issue is going to be with these pins right here. Um, and I know a lot of people, if you, depending on when you get the board, you either will have some uh, epoxy put on here or you won't. And I'm going to, I'm going to show you exactly what I do to take care of that. Uh, so let me just get this picture and picture out of here and let's just do it like this to make it a little bit easier. So we have more room. Okay. So the first thing is that we've got these pins and a lot of people are worried about these pins breaking off. Right. And so, um, what I want to do is I want to show you guys how I handle it so that we can take care of that. If you do not have the epoxy already on there. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and prep this by putting in, and I use the Gorilla Glue on here, um, and, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put a small dab of that on this side and a small dab of that right here, and I'll let it cool off, okay? Don't worry about if you come up on the pins too much because there is a good easy workaround with that, but you're going to see that I've got the glue on here now, and I'm just going to let it dry a little bit. But what I'm going to do is prep the board at the same time. So we're going to get started with our, um, our, uh, our flux here. And so I'm going to go ahead and just dabble and just to make sure I've got some around on the table, make sure it's coming out fine and it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and dab that on all the pads and do it like this. Okay. And so that you know, ahead of time when we're planning, uh, the idea of this, the layout of this board is going to be the following your XT 30 or 60 connections. In this case, I'm going to use a 60, but they're going to go on these pads right here. And then on this side is where we're going to put our, um, our capacitor. All right, so you want to make sure that you set it up uh, accordingly for that. So that board's now going to, we've got the flux on there, so now I'm just going to go ahead and get started on the VTX. And on the VTX, if I can just zoom in on this a little bit, on the VTX, you're looking at it this way, right, uh, with the arrow pointing forward. And so we're going to go ahead and prep all the pads here, but you're also going to turn over, because if you want smart audio to work, you've got your TX6 down here on the underside of the board, and you're going to want to go ahead and prep that as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that while we're... While we're uh, uh, getting this board ready and I'm going to still try to find on uh, this YouTube thing my posts uh, I don't know if I can do that so that I can watch uh, and see the comments but I'm going to try my best let's see if it works give me one second 
changing technology from Facebook to YouTube has been very interesting, uh, to say the least. Let's see if we find this. There we go. Let's see if that works. Oh, I think that is doing it. All right, there we go. Okay, so, hey, hey, bud, how you doing? Now, I finally see somebody chatting. I'm sorry I didn't have the chat part up. Okay, so uh, you want to make sure to do the flux on this side, too. So let me go ahead and knock that out for you real quick. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it on all the pads anyway. I just think it's a good rule to just go ahead and put your flux on there just in case you decide to come back later and solder something. You don't have to wonder whether you've done it or not. So I'm going to get all these handled real quickly. It only takes a second. And then we're going to go ahead and do the VTX. Now, depending on how you want to wire the VTX, you can wire it from underneath or you can wire it from the top. Um, uh, yeah, I like the, uh, uh, I, I got these, this is, um, let me show you this pen. So it's a, it's a number 99-20 um, and you can get it on Amazon. That's where I get mine. Uh, and uh, just look for the SRA uh, soldering and it's the flux pen 99-20. So pull that out because it's much cleaner, much easier to apply. And then you know, it's got one of those tips where if you press it down, it just sends more flux out. So it definitely stays, uh, it definitely distributes the flux evenly and very clean. All right. So the way I'm going to want to do this here and the way I would recommend is I'm going to go ahead and set up on the frame. Uh, I'm going to set the boards up, right? And so the best way for me to do this is going to be uh, to, I'm going to take their mounts. So let me go ahead and get this open real quick. And the actual wiring of this board isn't going to take very long, um, but I'm hoping that the method I show you may be a little bit easier than what you're used to. Uh, I don't know, though. This is just a method that I can tell you has worked for me and not caused any problems. So I'm going to go ahead and put the screws in and get the standoffs on. Uh, so let me do that real quick. All right. So there's one. We'll just get all four of them put in real quick. Let me zoom out so you guys can see that more. And let me turn this off right here. There we go. All right. So I'm going to put all four screws in. And I would recommend doing something like this only because it does make it easier. And I'll end up taping this frame down. But when you have the board mounted properly and you're able to solder without them flying all over the place, and you can lay them out properly too. So I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but again, I just recommend this. So, And I didn't prep anything ahead of time only because I wanted you to see it from out of the box uh, to... Um, finished product okay so let me just get going here now whether I mount the XT60 or not that's kind of up to everybody else as to what they want to do I just want to make sure that you understand where the pads what the pads are for I've seen people put their capacitors on the XT60 pads <laughs> which you can but I just there's plenty of room on this board that you don't have to slam everything into one area all right so the first thing I'm going to do is <clears throat> Since we know we're, we're working with the uh, the ESC, right? And so if you look at the arrow on the board, if you don't want to do any motor resource adjustments, uh, this ESC is actually going to mount uh, like this, all right? Assuming this is the front of the quad. So I'm going to go ahead and put the ESC down first uh, and make sure that I've got everything lined up with it just like I need, all right? And then I'm going to go ahead and drop uh, two standoffs or one standoff, whichever makes it easiest. Um, but what I want to do is I want to make sure that I get the board solid in place and I want to be able to put the flight controller not on it but beside it but on the stack. This way I can measure my wires properly. Uh, yeah, uh, the stack, uh, sorry, the stack does come with the mounting software. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not looking at the screen the whole time. Uh, but uh, I will, and I appreciate y'all answering some of the questions there. So what I would normally do is I would like to take the stack and lay it either like this and put one mount here. All right. And then depending on how I'm going to wire this, and it all depends on how much room you have to work with, you're either going to put the stack uh, underneath, uh, you're either going to wire the wires underneath, or you're going to go across or around. So depending on what you prefer to do, um, this is how I would do it. Now, the first thing we need to do, obviously, is we're going to go ahead and um, uh, put the um, solder on the <clears throat> on the pad. So let me just get this off real quick, just so I can knock that out. So we're going to start working with the ESC, and this is where I'm going to go ahead and use the magnifier. So I will not be able to see much on the screen. But I don't know if you're right-handed or left-handed. Lay it out however you like. I turn mine at an angle, which is going to make it easier. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and grab some tape now and tape this quad down. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna tape one arm here and then I'll tape the other arm real quick. Uh, on a three inch, uh, I'm gonna show you the new stack. Here, I tell you what, I can show you that real quick. So <laughs> this is the stack, <coughs> I'm sorry, this is the build that I'm extremely excited about. And, uh, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll go here real quick just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here. All right, so this is what I'm about to present to you guys in a later video today is going to be the new uh, Diablo. And this is a super, I'm extremely proud of this. I spent a lot of time designing it. I finished it a couple days ago. This is the one that I posted on Facebook uh, to you guys. Um, this has the F440 stack in it. So this is a three inch quad. Uh, it, it is flying powerful chaos motors. Um, this is flying the 1407 3600 KV made for us by Brother Hobby. Um, inside this stack or inside this frame is um, the HDLRC F440. Um, and uh, it also has the micro DVR in it. And on the back, uh, it has the ViFly uh, 2 Finder. All right. So um, this this little sucker right here is a beast and uh, you'll see some pictures of it and I'll I'll really present it in a video uh, but I guess I could show you that what it does fit now this is a 30 millimeter standoff uh, area uh, and that's what these are right here um, but I fit it without any problem and as long as you wire it properly and make room for your space uh, you definitely won't have any problems with it yeah I appreciate it man this is this is uh, I don't know if I'm getting enough of it on camera there but this is the build um, and it's, I mean, it's, it's fully integrated in there. And one of the things that I did different was to add strength, but also to add functionality to it is there's this bottom plate here and the bottom plate actually has the stack on it. So depending on what stack you use, you can remove the bottom plate without having to do the whole assembly inside the frame. And then you just pop it on and bolt it into the standoffs. So you get that extra strength on the arms. Plus you have the ability to pull the stack out and work on it and then slide it back in there. Uh, I will introduce this more later, but I will just get back to the stack right now. Um, all right, so yeah, it does fit on three inch builds without any problem. Uh, okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get started on here. And uh, I take this down, but I do wanna move it just a little bit. So bear with me one second and let me um, get you guys back to that spot right there. There you go. All right, so let me move this just so I can get a little bit better angle for me. And what we're gonna do is we'll start with the pads right here. Okay, so um, I've got a pretty clean tip on the uh, on my solder, uh, on my iron right now. So I'm just gonna grab my solder and I'm gonna get going really quickly on this. Um, and I don't know if I can zoom it in enough for you guys to see, but I'll do my best. And I'll turn it around so that you guys can see it. I guess I need to let it a little bit better for the camera. So let's try it like that. All right, okay, let's move this over. And we'll get started. And remember, guys, don't cook the pads. Just get them, get just get it as much on there without having to run the solder all over the place. You get to see how quickly you can do it, and you can just wipe it on there. It's not like a, it's a, a one-time deal. So I'll try to do this angle this way so you can see it as well. Um, I don't usually do it going outward, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Okay, so right there, the pads are done, all right? And if I can get a zoom in on this, I'll try to show you guys. There's no runoff. Um, I know it's maybe a little blurry, but there's no runoff. Uh, the, the, the solder is just enough to hold it on there without any problem, and it took less than 30 seconds to get it done. So <coughs> part of the idea is just get it on there, kind of wipe it on, but don't hold the iron to the board. It's not necessary to do that because you will be putting, you will be tinning your wires as well. Uh, and then let me go ahead and just do these XT60. And for this, I just do a real quick circ circular motion. Uh, and that's going to be on there just fine. And those are good. I can keep my finger on the board. It's not hot. So you can tell I'm not overheating it. And then I'm just going to turn this around real quickly so that I can do uh, where I told you guys the um, capacitor is going to go. All right. So we're going to do this one and this one. And that's it. So the ESC is done. All right. And your end result is gonna be a pretty clean uh, prep, right? Uh, there's nothing running. We're not touching any of the black, uh, we're not touching any of the MOSFETs here at all. Um, everything is spaced pretty well away. And then all you're gonna to have to do is just, like I said, prep your wires and you're good to go. So that's the ESC. Try to get yours to look like this where there's not a big clump of solder laying all over the place 
or where it's accidentally touching something. So now that we've got the ESC done, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and lay out the rest of the rest of the setup, right? And let me let me lay this out to where I know the front is uh, facing to my left. Okay. So what we've got next is we've got your flight controller, and uh, on the flight controller itself. Uh, again, one of the big things that we want to do is remember that if you want smart audio to work, you're going to make sure to get TX6 from underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and knock that out real quick. And the way I usually will solder this and the way I would recommend it is, oops, there's no standoff over here. over here. Let me put a standoff over here. And I hear, you know, I, I mean, there's people saying the BTXs are failing. There's people saying the ESCs are failing. And I get it. I mean, there, there, there are components in every build that fail. Problem is, is um, if I could show you some of the pictures I see, because we've got a pretty high-end microscope down here that takes digital pictures for us, you'll see MOSFETs shifted. You'll see solder touching uh, components that it's not supposed to touch. And so you end up grounding things out, too. I mean, it's I can't say it's manufacturer error on all of this. There is a lot of there is a lot of soldering error on the part of some of the uh, you know end users. And I'm trying to at least try to do something that shows you a better way to maybe get it done. Now, the, one of the things you want to do is, since we are going to get the TX6 from underneath the board, um, uh, from underneath the board, I'm going to go ahead and add that wire right now. And so in this case, just to make it easy, I'm going to go ahead and tie this down. All right, and I recommend you do this because I've seen, whoops, I, I've seen people like they put the board down and they chase it all over the table. Um, and so again, you risk getting solder on something. It's not worth the risk to do that. So let me just go ahead and put this down. I've got a little screwdriver that I can use for that. So let me just do that real quickly. Because this is pretty much the only wire outside of maybe the buzzer. If you want to do the buzzer, you can as well. But let me just go ahead and show you what I'm going to do here. All right, so I'm going to angle this this way so I can get back on it. Let me just get a piece of tape out. I'm just going to put one end of the board down. All right. And now I'm going to go ahead and knock that one or a couple of those uh, pads out. I'll, I'll, I guess I'll do the buzzer as well if, if we need to. <clears throat> but it's going to be the same process. It's going to be real quick, all right? So um, we're going to take the TX6, which is here in the corner, and we're going to hit on that real quick, and that's done. And then we're going to go to the buzzer, and that's done. That's it. That's all we want to do. So we just finished soldering and, and uh, prepping that. Now, uh, I guess for the sake of making sure that I show you how to wire this, I'm going to go ahead and add um, a TX6 to it. So let me go ahead and do that. So on the wiring itself, um, you can go ahead and add flux to your wire before you tin it. I actually have just started doing that recently, and I do like the um, end result. So it may be in your best uh, benefit to do that as well. And then if you have a good place to put the wire, I'll usually just run it through a hole or something so it's just standing up. Um, try not to hold it in your hand because usually you're not going to get a good tin out of it. I'll leave it something like this, right? So I know that I think that's off camera a little bit, but... There. So you can see the wire is just kind of sitting up here. It's only going to take two seconds to tin this wire anyway. Uh, make sure after you put the flux on it, you, you twist it so you don't have any strands coming loose. And then just hit it real quick. I mean, it doesn't take much. All right. But you'll hear the flux kind of like crackling. And that's perfect. All right. So that's done. And now we're going to trim the wire back. And because these pads are so small, I say to give you, I recommend that you give it about one millimeter uh, of space. I wouldn't give it much more than that. So I'm going to cut this real quick and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, okay, this is what I've got left on the end of the wire. I don't know if I can get this to not be blurry, but let me see. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. And I guess it's, it's not going to be easy to see, but uh, it is a very small, you can see kind of the silver there. It's a very small, about a one millimeter, maybe even less of wire left. Um, so now I'm just going to attach that because once we get this board done underneath, we're not going to be doing it again. So let me go ahead and attach this wire. And for that, I'm going to use some tweezers. And I would recommend you get flat tweezers and not pointed tweezers. So don't go with something like this here. And the reason I don't go with these is because if you do get the wire hot, these tend to pierce through the silicone sheathing. So I would always use flat and it gives you a pretty good hold anyway. And it's all going to be about a one second or less touch, right? Done. That's it. Not even a second. If you hold it a second, you're still on there a little too long. All right, so the board is done as far as underneath. I'm not attaching a buzzer today, but if you do attach a buzzer, you'll use the, uh, the buzzer uh, down here. So let me go ahead and flip this over now. And I'm going to put this board on our 
pins, and we're going to address the issue of people who say the pins break, okay? So, if you manhandle this thing like a beast, yes, <clears throat> the pins will break. It is part of it. Um, it they're, they're, you guys want small boards, <clears throat> 20 millimeter boards with everything on them, they, they pack it in as tough as possible. However, uh, you've got to be gentle with this thing, okay? So, when I added the glue on there, um, when I said you don't have to worry about it uh, if you hit the pins with it, you don't. And the reason you don't is because you come in here with your heat gun and just kind of heat the glue up, right? And then you can press the board down. Now, what you've just done is you let that glue move and, and, and soften. Once you press the board down, it's actually going to form a nice bond around the flight controller. And that glue is going to hold that flight controller, those pins, and everything in place. Make sure you get all the way down. Let me heat this up just a little bit more. All right, and press it all the way down, and you're good. When that glue dries, that glue is now going to bond to the plastic on the top as well, and you don't have to worry about taking it off. I mean, if you do, you just reheat it, and you can lift the board right off. But I know for a fact that I'm done with this, and I have not had a single pin break since I have been applying the glue and, uh, and making these uh, fit properly. So now that we're done with this, our board is ready. Now we're just going to go ahead and prep the top. And again, you're basically going to do this with, I don't know, one second or... On the tinning, you may take a little bit longer, but again, it's going to be pretty brief. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get that started. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, and six. And that's the Cameron VTX side. And I'll turn it. And uh, now we're going to get the receiver side. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, and six. And even though I'm not using all the receivers, I always just go ahead and tin uh, the pads. And then we're going to go ahead and get the next one done. So let's do this. So we're going to do the LEDs. One, two, and then we've got our other buzzer. Three, and we've got a five volt here, which we may or may not use depending. All right, so now we're done with that. So now our flight controller is all ready to go to. And the if you can look at the um, solder on those pads, I mean, again, it's very small, but it's quick. And it's not running off to where there's a clump of solder just laying out there. All right. So now that we're done with that, what we want to do is we know that uh, if we look at this board, we've got our VTX input on this side. And I'll see if I can get this light out of the way so I can zoom in a little bit more. All right. But we've got our VTX right here and our camera inputs right here. All right. So in this case, um, what I would do is I would usually wire my VTX and lay, lay it out how you want to. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire it from underneath. And so to do that, I'm going to go ahead and lay the board on here so I can run my wire properly. All right. So let me just go ahead and get two. Um, let me get two uh, standoffs put down now. And this to me is a very clean way to do your solder uh, properly and not worry about over soldering or having too many wires laying around. So let me get this done real quick. Okay, so now that I've got that down, what I'm looking to do is I'm most likely, depending on how I'm going to lay this out, if I place the board like this, right, uh, what I'm looking to do is I'm going to run the wires from here to here, and then when I'm done, I'm going to be able to flip this board over, and all the wires are going to stay inside, and none of them are going to be exposed on the edge, all right? That's going to give us a much cleaner and much more reliable connection. So this is, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. And again, you're just going to apply another standoff and you're just basically going to tear it. Okay. So here's your tear right there. And, uh, okay. So now let's go ahead and tape the frame down and I'll grab some wire. I got to get some wire that I want to use here real quickly. Um, uh, let's see. I need for this one, I'm going to need, uh, my video, uh, my, um, uh, uh smart audio my power and my ground so i tell you what i will just take uh i guess i'll just take this wire here all right it doesn't have to be long by any means so just go ahead and do what you got to do um but i'm going to clip this wire i'm going to strip the wire and i'm going to go ahead and tin the wire real quickly all right so let me go ahead and do that and I'll use my blue for ground. I do not have a black one that was just laying there, so I'll use the yellow for video. All right, 
I'll use the red, obviously, for my um, positive. And I'll use the white for my uh, uh, smart audio. All right. So again, we have a very small wire that we're stripping here. And we're going to go ahead and go ahead and flux them real quick. Again, like I said, I mean, I only started doing this part of it with the fluxing because I usually just hit it with solder. I'm going to start doing this about a week and a half or two weeks ago, maybe. Maybe a little bit longer than that. Um, but it does seem to give me a better bond uh, with this. And so um, I'm going to continue now to make it a, a standard routine. All right. So those all have flux on them. Now, I will do the other side, but I'll do it in just a little bit. Um, so first thing is find a place where you can put the wire. And a way I'm going to do it is I'm going to stick it through the mounting hole there, and I'm just going to kind of take it sideways. So we're going to go ahead and knot this out real quickly. And it's going to be very brief solder. There's one. Do the next one. And again, make sure to twist it so that you don't have any strands coming out. And then we'll do the second one. There's plenty of like little, little, uh, things on these builds where you can use instead of having to have alligator clamps or whatever they're called uh, this will make it pretty simple and pretty quick there's two now I'm gonna go ahead and clean the tip of this off because I can see there's a solder build up on here so I'm gonna clean that real quick okay now I need to twist this all right now I'm not over any of the components so I'm not worried about the solder getting on them but it is easy to just use what you've got at the table. So here's three. All right, that's done. And we'll do the last one, which will be the blue one. And that's going to be used, like I said, as our ground right now, okay? Then we're going to go ahead and tin the board and knock this out. All right, so that's done. Now, the reason I don't strip the other end before I solder or tin them is because they can tend to slide uh, the wire can tend to slide, and so I'll usually tin them first, and so now I'm just going to go ahead and knock the other side out. And that should give me plenty of length there to do what I need to do. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, I do, actually. Um, I use, uh, and I'll show you the solder itself, but yes, I do. Um, and they work very well together. Uh, so I would still recommend that you do that. Sorry, that's to answer the um, question about the uh, rosin core. Okay, so let me go ahead and strip these now. And now I can pull them because there's solder on the other end, so the wire shifting or the, the uh, sheath shifting is not an issue to me at this point. Actually, we've got the white here for the um, other part, so I'm not really going to mess with that. I forgot that we had that already done. All right, so this part's done, so I'm going to go ahead and flux this real quick. Okay, one, two, do the blue, then we'll do the red. I haven't stripped the red yet. Okay. All right. Now, let me go ahead and tin these up real quick, and we'll be ready to go. All right, looks like we're ready. So now it's time to prep the VTX. Let me zoom in there and you can see that. So we're gonna prep the VTX right here. And uh, let me show you how we're gonna knock that out. It'll be pretty simple, pretty quick. All right, so if you look at this, your first, your um, space over here, your pad over here is gonna be your video. And then we're gonna come down and we know we've got uh, our positive, our ground, and then our uh, OSD uh, smart audio right there. Okay, so these are done. Now you grab your wire, and you want to make sure that you cut back. You don't want any excess wire on this one. So let's go ahead and cut them back. Okay, there's one. I won't cut back both sides. I'll only cut back one side at a time. So let me cut back these, because just in case I need a little extra. There's two, and then let me grab 
the red. Let me straighten this one out. There we go. We'll cut this back and do three, okay? All right, so we've got our wires. I'll try to put these on a background so you can see, but they are, again, uh, very short. Uh, let me see if I can, I don't even know if that's gonna help, but I was hoping, to, yeah, I think you can see that maybe a little bit better. I'll try to zoom in here. But if you can look at that, and I'll show you, let me put this wire up here. So if you can see that, that's how short it is, right? So again, it's about a millimeter, maybe even a little less, somewhere between a millimeter or so. So anyways, that's how you wanna do it. Now, I'm gonna to have to turn this quad around because I am, like I said, I'm right-handed soldering. So, but you wanna come from the inside, not from the outside, right? So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get started with, uh, let me zoom out a little bit. We're gonna get started with our ground. Uh, well, actually, to do this properly, you get started with a positive. You want to go outside in so you don't cross over a cable you've already done. So we're just going to go ahead and knock this out. And you just come over the top. And once you get it right where you want it, just hit it real quick. There you go. It's done. And then we're going to do the same with the ground. Go over the top. Get your position right. Done. And, okay, so this is going to be our um, smart connector right here. So in this case, with the smart connector, or with the smart cable, smart audio, I mean, um, I could have gone in, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this one, and I've got to get, because these wires are going to go uh, over to this side, I'm going to run this underneath, and I'll deal with the length in just a little bit, but most likely for now, because I'm not too worried about it, I'm just going to kind of weave it through, and then just come to right here. All right, so let me go ahead and clip that out. on that. And then let me tin it real quick. Okay, that's good to go. So we can cut it back just a little bit. All right, and now we'll attach it. Again, just get it right where you need it, and it's all of less than a second to hold it, and it's done. All right, so as long as your temperatures are set right and everything's good, you're good to go. Now, last one's going to be our video, and I put that yellow wire somewhere, but I do not see it. I might have knocked it around the table. So let me see what I'm going to use. I'm wondering if it's stuck to my tape. Uh, for the sake of just showing you guys this video, I'm just going to go ahead and use the white, the small white that I prepared ahead of time. And so again, we're going to do the same thing. So right here, it takes all of, there you go, and that's on there. Okay, so now we've got our cables done, and now we're going to bring them around. So we've got our power here, and I need to cut this one off. Uh, let me zoom out. Okay, so we're going to snip this to where, again, you just got about a millimeter or so. And what you're going to do is you're going to try to make sure that you know exactly where you want to put these wires, right? So if you find yourself short on this, you can easily just take off the standoff that you were using, and you can bring, by using your mount, you can bring the VTX over at an angle that you would like. Let's say just like this, for example. All right, I'm going to bring the VTX. Uh, let me find one that works. So I'll put it at an angle, let's say, like right here. All right, I think that should get me enough room. And now I'm going to go ahead and wire the rest of the setup. You see, by using your mounts and the, the setups that they give you, uh, you can really make yourself a nice little workbench and make sure to tape this down so it quits sliding all over the place. And now you can just finish your wiring job, right? So there's your battery. Uh, we want to get the um, video, which is going to go right here. There we go. Get your ground, which will snip off a little bit. It's a little too much. All right. There you go. And you're done. You just wired all three boards. Uh, there, You've got smart audio connected. You've got um, your VTX connected. 
And now if you want to go and you want to wire, let's say, your um, uh, camera to it, it's pretty simple because we know that uh, we know that on the flight controller, which what, what we've done, and here, let me show you what this is going to look like when you're done anyway. So you've got your arrow pointing this way, right? So you've got your camera and your ground and everything going here. For the sake of just uh, showing you guys, I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, let me see, I was hoping to use a camera wire, but uh, let me see if I have an elf, elf can. Hold on one second. Okay, and I do. So I'm going to go ahead and just take my uh, camera wire, right? And it's going to be basically the same thing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and twist it pretty good. And I know my camera is going to be sitting somewhere around here. So I'm going to cut a little bit more because of the movement of the camera. And I can tuck this out. And uh, usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll pass the solder point by about 5 millimeters. And that'll be my cut point. So I'm going to cut this wire right about here. All right. And I will go ahead and do the tinning like normal. Okay. So we'll do we'll strip the three wires like we've normally been doing, and we're gonna get ready to put some flux on them. Okay, so let me get the flux pin, put some flux on these. Part and just make sure to twi twist them, get the strands out of the way. All right, now with these ready to go, I'm just going to go ahead and just lay them on something so I can tin them real quick. <clears throat> and this time I'll probably use tweezers just because I don't want my finger hitting the wire, but this will be a pretty quick, uh, pretty quick little job here as well. One, there's two, and there's three. I want to make sure they all look good. They do. And there we go. All right. And again, we're going to cut these back to uh, about a millimeter. So one, two, three. All right. Now, we know the camera's going on this side because it's the front of the quad. So again, because I am right-handed, I'm going to go ahead and move my VTX out of the way. Just sit it up there for now. And we're going to look at our pads here. We've got ground, camera, and 5-volt. So go ahead and twist your wire up real good. All right. And then just end it in that order. So there's right here, you've got ground, uh, camera, and 5-volt. So we're going to go ahead and knock that out real quick. And again, this is less than a second of soldering time. So do not hold it longer. If you find you're doing that, then it's just not your solder's not taking or your gun's not hot enough, your iron's not hot enough. So there's one. You got to move around the screws and the standoffs a little bit. There's two. And there's three. All less than a second to touch. And they're all on there very well. Okay? So they're not going anywhere. And now if I show you what this looks like, there's your setup right there, all right? And now what we're going to do is we're going to flip the VTX over, and uh, you will have a very successful clean build using, I mean, you're basically done. I mean, at this point, the only things left to do, and I'm trying to see if I have, um, <clears throat> I mean, it really depends on how you want to lay this out, but <clears throat> on your board, if you're he hooking up, like, let's say, a FR Sky re receiver, then you've got your three here, so you've got your S-Bus, your ground, and your 5-volt right here. So if I was to wire this um, accordingly, then I would connect those, but I really don't plan on putting a receiver on here right now, but I'm mainly wanting to show you guys how I would solder this board. So let me just kind of show you where we're at on this. So we've got, we're, we've got to put some standoffs back on here. And let me get everything cleaned out out of the way. And here's our standoffs right here. So we're going to go ahead and put this standoff here. Where does the audio come from then? Only three wires to the cam. Uh, I don't believe this camera has audio, my friend. So um, not on this one that I would be using. Um, the uh, VTX uh, 
is usually on some of the ones that we have is going to be providing the audio, but on these ones you're not getting audio from it or else you would obviously have a fourth wire, which would be usually a blue audio wire, but it's not on this setup. So um, that doesn't, that's not a part of this VTX and it's not part of the camera. Uh, all right, so what you do now is you go ahead and you can tuck your wires, right, just like this, and there's your build, okay? And you have your, um, where are they? Let me find these little nylon uh, standoffs here. No, not nylon standoffs, the nylon uh, fasteners. And we're just going to go ahead and put them on. And I'll use this little tool to make it a little easier for me. Now, if you want to use like the DVR, all right, the DVR has an audio uh, link to it, but your camera has to have audio. So, I mean, again, we're not dealing with that equipment right now as far as the camera or the VTX. Um, so in that case, it's not, a, it's not applicable here. Two. Three. And there you go. All right. So just to give you an example of, uh, I mean, just to give you an example of how clean it should look when it's done, Outside of this one wire, which is, like I said, is going to be your um, smart audio, this is, uh, this is everything hooked up between flight controller, VTX, and ESC. Uh, soldering is at a minimum. Uh, there is very little pad solder on there. Uh, there's nothing running off. Um, now, if you wanted to look at the uh, ESC, uh, let me, I mean, not the ESC, but the capacitor, I'll show you what I've done. And this is, this is kind of a cool little thing. If you guys are interested in doing this, it kind of adds a neat look to it. Um, but the way I usually do them is I'll take uh, some heat tubing right here. Uh, oh, the smart, well, the smart audio wire is, um, I guess what I'm, what I'm referring to is the ability to control your VTX um, uh, from, the, uh, from, the, from your controller, from your flight controller and your OSD. And so you'll set this for TBS Smart Audio um, uh, in, your, in your setup by attaching the, uh, the uh, OSD output here, which is on the board, on the VTX, uh, to the uh, TX6 on the flight controller. And so that's where you're going to get your smart audio or your, your ability to um, change your VTX settings from the flight controller, from, from your OSD and your goggles. Uh, all right, so here's what I do on, this, um, on these capacitors, right? So I'll usually measure about five millimeters away from both top and bottom of the capacitor on the heat shrink, right? And I'll go ahead and cut that real quick and I'll show you. So um, just cut it, open it up and fit the capacitor right there, right? And you're gonna leave that five millimeter gap, all right? Now go ahead and heat it up. And the idea is to try to give it this kind of like exhaust pipe a look. I like it. I mean, you may not, but I, I like it. It kind of takes the ugliness out of a capacitor. But what will happen is it'll start rounding up at the top, right? And you're going to get this, like, smokestack from, a, like, what a car would have or a Jeep or what have you that goes underwater uh, or, that I mean, that goes mudding. Um, and so you get this kind of look to it, which is right here, okay? So this is what I end up with, right? And uh, it's got this, like, uh, curved top around it, Okay. Um, it also protects the casing there, and then you've got it on the bottom as well. So the end result is obviously you're gonna you're gonna solder this uh, to right here on the board. Um, and I guess what I'll do is I'll solder it for you, but kind of give you an idea of what I'm doing with this at the end. So so if you want to solder your capacitor onto this board, it's very simple. You're gonna cut back all your excess uh, wire, right? So I'm gonna cut back on my ground. I'm gonna cut back everything but about a millimeter and a half, and on my power or my positive, I mean. I'll probably cut back about center. All right, so I'm looking at about this much uh, uh, exposed wire on each side. Now I will add a little bit of solder. I will pre-tin these just a little bit. Even though it tends to not stick very well, it's fine. I just need it to have something to hold at the beginning. Then I'll just put just a little bit on there, just like that. All right, 
And now I'm going to take it over to my spots and I'm going to put the ground on first. Just like that, and it's done. And now I'm going to bring over the positive, just like that, and it's done. All right? So now I've got my two connections on my capacitor, and what, what's going to be cool about this is, all right, so now it looks like a little stack, like on a truck, I guess, or whatever. But what I want to show you is the end result. So what I'll do is, depending on where it's going, I've got my standoffs. So here it looks like a little bit of a top exhaust or a top stack uh, attached to my um, standoffs here. So my capacitor is in a really safe spot, um, and the I will hot glue the connections at the bottom there, which I think you can see maybe, uh, yeah, from that. All right. So I like doing it like this. You can you can also lay it out across the frame, and and if you run out of space, you can put it here against the arm, and then zip tie it. But this is a pretty good little method, and it keeps everything looking safe. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you can change. Uh, the channel and band from your from your transmitter. That's right, and that's what I was referring to. And so that's how you would want to hook this up. All right, so um, the next section that I'll do here, but uh, I'm going to stop it here because I want to start making the videos smaller so I don't waste everybody's time and we'll do a second part. But I, I, I mainly wanted to show you guys what you can expect if you solder these right um, and you use just the right solder and the right iron and everything, you should be able to hide almost all your wires that link the two boards together uh, make sure to heat up your, um, make sure to add glue to your um, pins on the ESC, and you really have no risk at all. Uh, so that hopefully will get you, and this will just be a, kind of a, a section one of this setup, and then I'm going to prepare to do section two, and I'll hit it back here live shortly. But um, there you go, guys. If you have any questions, let me know. You can find this board on our website, and uh, if you need a video made for any specific connections on here, let me know, but I should be able to cover all this before the end of the day. I will also come back and add to this video the DVR. Um, but just to give you an idea so you're aware, this is the DVR right here. It's extremely small, 20 by 20. And to wire this, um, it takes really nothing. There's only three wires to go unless you are going to use the audio. And uh, it's got the SD card slot here. So in this case, I'll usually just lay it on the side of the board like this. And then I will patch in because if you look at this VTX, uh, you will notice that there are two. Let me get a little pointer here. You will notice that there are two sections here. So you've got on your VTX... Uh, let me look at this real quick. Uh, okay, so on your VTX, you've got uh, your power, your ground, your OSD control. Then you've got these two open, which are power and ground again, but these are regulated at 5 volts. If you try to tap in your uh, anything to this power, you're going to get that full 7 to 26 or whatever it is voltage and blow something out. So, um, yeah, of course, add it, please, if you can. I'd, I'd really appreciate the uh, promotion on it. Um, to help some other people out. Th and I appreciate you asking. Thank you. Um, so what we're going to do is you would end up tapping in to um, here and here for your positive and ground. And then because you've used the pad underneath, you can use the top portion of this pad for the video. So literally, you're going to lay this board very easily, just like this, or just like this, or however you want to, to solder it. Okay? And you're going to link those wires. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to do it real quick because, I mean, heck, we're here already. Might as well just do this real quick. So if you want to connect the, um, the uh, uh, DVR, right, I'm just going to put a thing here to hold this in place. Here's what you would do. And I figure might as well, I've got it out here, might as well knock it out real quick. All right, so let me get some wire. All I need is three wires. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to try to prep these pretty quickly so I can show you guys what we're doing. But this is how you would hook up the uh, DVR, which I'm going to tell you, I'm in love with this DVR. I like the fact that it feeds directly from the camera. I don't have any latency, uh, any issues at all with it. Um, and uh, it's an excellent alternative if you don't have like, a, uh, I don't know, like the uh, uh, Caddx, Run Camp Splitter, Caddx Turtle, whatever. Uh, these are great additions. So I'm just going to go ahead and knock these out pretty quickly. So uh, first thing you're going to do is um, go ahead and tin... Uh, your VTX, okay, so let me turn it, all right, so 10 the VTX, and so we'll do one, and we'll do two, all right, and so now we've got our, our video over here, and we've got everything sitting right here, all right, so just for my own reference, uh, we are going ground, 5 volt, and video, so from outside in, it's ground, 5 volt, and video, so let me go ahead and get that on here, Where's my little standoff? These suckers are so small, they fall out everywhere. So, okay, so we know video is the first one uh, on the on on the VTX here. 
I'm not tinning this yet. I'm just going to try to hold it there so you guys can see what it would look like. Okay, I'm not trying to delay you guys. Actually, you know what? I can't do that because if this thing opens up, I'm going to have a hard time. So let me just knock this out real quick. Let me get the ground. All right, let me tin that. And let me just go ahead and get this done. Again, I'm just going to kind of hold the wire in this hole here. Just going to go ahead and get it tinned up real quick. There's one. Nah. Now I'm going to show you guys something because you're going to get to learn and save yourself the money for my own mistake. So let me go ahead and add the ground. Now on this VTX, I have to remember, bear with me a second because I need to look at this. Okay, so five volt is here, so it's gonna go five volt. I believe we are five volt and ground. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is, we can do the video first video feed first so let me go ahead and put that wire on there solder that up okay so your video is going to go here your other video is connected. Okay. And then you've got um, uh, you've got ground. I'll show you guys again real quick. But you've got ground. So you've got uh, ground, 5 volt, and video. So video is your third dot on this side. And I'm not going to screw that thing back down again but I am going to be able to turn this board around real quickly so your video is going to go here very quickly there you go so your video is done now and we will do the ground next ground is on the outside so put your ground here and your ground is right here Okay, and then you've got just your 5 volt left, and we'll just try to attach this. Let me see if I can do this. There we go. Alright, put your 5 volt here, and then you will put your 5 volt on this side. And remember, this is 5 volt, not uh, just fully open, so I was going to explain to you the mistake I made which is that I fried this one that I'm using right now. Uh, you'll see, you can see a chip that looks like it about exploded. Um, I could not get my mind on what I was doing and then it hit me real quickly. I kept typing it into the full power, not the five. So if you look right here, you'll see that this chip is obliterated. So this VTX or this DVR is toast, but hey, it's a lesson learned. I wasn't paying attention at the time. Um, and then what I'll do is usually just twist them up a little bit, find a way to lay it out. And so you can either do one of two things here. Now, if you want to put the VTX on top, the DVR on top, this is the way to do it. If you wanted to put the VTX on mine, I put the VTX the other way around, then um, you can do that by just taking this board and going underneath it, and you'll be able to tuck the wires however you wish. So uh, in this case, and I'll show you here, because you've already used the bottom pads, it's not as easy to hide these wires, but you can definitely make them look clean. So I'll show you here. Yeah, I know. I, uh, I mean, I'm already here, and I feel like, hey, heck, we might as well knock it out. So um, let me lift this off real quick. Okay, so we've left plenty of wire here to be able to do our stuff here, uh, and I heated that up, so I need to put that back on real quick, so bear with me a second. Because I heated up the other side, I need to touch this up real quickly because this one came off, so you got to be very careful and make sure you check it. 
Let me go ahead and just apply that back. There we go. All right. So we've got enough play here to be able to put the DVR in. My recommendation to you is make sure to turn the DVR so that it is underneath and facing outward from the USB because if not, the USB is going to kind of get in the way. So if I was to add this right now, and I probably would do the wiring just a bit different, but this would most likely sit like so. Sorry, I've got to get this angled properly. So bear with me. All right, so I'd probably put the DVR uh, just like that, all right? And then because I'm going to angle this the other way, unfortunately on the DVR side, I don't have on mine because I planned it properly. And here I was just hooking it up at the last minute. Um, I did my wires a little differently and I'll show you. But in the end, this is what your build will most likely look like, except you can do better on the wiring. Like I said, I wasn't planning on adding it to the stack in this video. So I'm not able to like really have tucked these in the way I would have normally done it. But still, nonetheless, uh, let me see if I can just get this to sit just for the time being to show you guys what you can expect on this. It's not even the right length of screw uh, for this. But anyways, I'll just hold it in place here now and you can see. So what you've got is you end up with your um, DVR and your VTX and your whole stack. And the height of this will be under 30 millimeters. It's about 25 millimeters. All right, guys. So I hope this really helps you guys. Um, it's just a, a quick video, but that's how you hook everything up. Uh, and uh, that's going to be part one of this video. I will redo this DVR. I guess we'll use it on our example, but I'll put one that works since I fried that one. Um, and uh, we'll get back here and do some uh, other adjustments on it. All right. So for now, though, there you go. Enjoy. I hope that helped. And I will talk to you guys soon. Uh, and again, as always, please um, let me, there we go. Let me know if I can do anything to help you guys. Sorry, my whole video setup is being adjusted. But um, we'll be doing some more uh, tutorials on these, okay? See you guys later. Appreciate y'all very much. And as always, please subscribe. Talk to you soon, guys. Bye.